Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Penciler KG back with another video on drawing Finn's character series. As you guys might have already seen in this video, we will be drawing David Schwimmer aka Ross Geller from the very famous TV show Friends. Make sure you watch the entire video, there are going to be a lot of cool tips and tricks that I am sure you will love. All my videos are backed by a lot of practice and experience. I explain things step by step with a few tips and tricks in between and this video is no exception. Make sure you watch it till the end to get the most out of it. We'll be using our observation skills, a normal A3 size sketchbook, few pencils, some erasers and some blending materials to complete this project. Before we begin, please spare a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit that bell icon so that you get an instant notification the next time I upload some new content. Let's get started. We'll be using this picture for our project. The entire drawing is going to be freehand and I won't be using any kind of grids or supporting guidelines for that matter. To achieve this, there are some observation skills that we need to develop. Let us observe this picture and extract as much information as we can about the portrait. Let me zoom this up a little bit. The entire face from the top of the forehead till the chin can be divided into three equal parts. Observe here. The first part starts from the upper forehead and goes to somewhere between the eyes. The second part stops at the end of the nose and the third one is at the bottom of the chin. Like most faces, the width of his face is equal to the distance between the center of his eyes till the bottom of the chin. The length of the nose is equal to either halves of the face. Nose wings will end up at position which is almost under the tear duct region. Observe closely, the right mouth ending is just under this point, the left one is under this one. Also, observe carefully, the left mouth ending is slightly above the right mouth ending. Now that we have sufficient information, let's start with the project. Starting off by creating a circle to mark my territory and also I'll mark the orientation lines which will be my brow line and the nose line which will run vertically at the center of the face. This time I'll be using a slightly different approach. I'll start with one eye and based on the width and height of the eye, I will calculate the position of other facial features. Starting with the right eye, I'm roughly marking the area and I'm constantly trying to form relations with the left eye. If you observe closely, you will identify that the left eye is slightly above the right eye. I have also marked the eyebrows roughly just so that we get an idea of their line and thickness. I will gently shade the iris so as to get a slight resemblance with the reference picture. Moving on to the nose, I will roughly try to find the angle of nose from the right eye. We all know about the points where we have to place the nose wings. Following the measurement points, I will drop a line to identify the exact location. Hmm. 
Now, to mark the mouth endings, I will drop a line from the iris down to the face. And this is the point where I will be placing mouth endings. Before placing the mouth endings, I will also be kneading the cheeks area just to get the vertical position. While marking the mouth endings, I am imagining a triangle on the side of the face with three points. One at the nose wing, one at the cheeks and the last one at the mouth endings. This trick helps immensely while identifying the correct placement. Do try this trick out, I am sure it will help you big time. Since the light source is at the top, the area under the lower lip which is also called as labiomental fold has a lot of shadow area. Marking the chin area while maintaining the correct proportions. While I am marking the features, I am also constantly trying to block the shapes of lights and shadows. This is very important, yet a lot of people miss this part out. Guys, trust me. This is a game changer. Don't forget to block your shadows and light shapes. I'm constantly keeping the measurement points in check. I don't want to disturb my layout while fixing something. So, after every small fix, I quickly do a check on the position of all the features. Now, let us mark the ears. Just notice the left ear is slightly above the right one and the bottom part is roughly at the line of the nose. Now let us mark the hairline. I will also divide the overall shape of the hair region. There is this dark block which I will separate out from the rest of the region so that I have more information while shading it. Now, let us start with adding some shades to it. Starting off with the right eye, I will very gently try to put in some smooth skin like texture. I am moving the pencil while following the contours of the face. I won't go into a lot of details while rendering at this moment. I like to see the overall drawing first and then darken or lighten the areas depending on how it looks. However, I am always being mindful about the values that I see in the portrait. The darkest area is the hair and I have to maintain that balance if I want it to have a realistic look. Working on the nose, the left part of the nose is receiving some shadow region. I'll try to capture that in my drawing. It is things like these that gives a realistic touch to the drawing. bad shades, I am using the guiding lines that I created while working on the outlines. Which is why I say that it is very important to have those. I am darkening some areas slightly to get the shadow area and at the same time I am removing some extra graphite to give it a more rounder shape. Working on the neck region, this area contains a lot of shadows. We have to really go dark in this place and make sure we follow the direction of the skin and contours. Moving on to drawing his shirt. I'll fast forward this part as there is nothing to show here. Just making sure that I capture the dark color of his shirt. That's it. Now, before starting with the hair, I will slightly refine the tonal values with small modifications in the shades.
To give the skin an even tone, at some places I will also use a blending stump. As hair is the darkest part of the face, more often than not, many artists tend to pick up an 8B or a 10B pencil and start shading the hair directly. This approach is good when you are working on a quick sketch, but if you want it to look more realistic and reflect proper highlights, then you actually need to start with a light grade and gradually darken the areas that actually need to go that dark. I am using an OHP sheet to avoid smudging the drawing with my hand. I have started with lightly covering the area with a thick lid. I will slightly blend the graphite to get the desired texture and gradually move on to the darker shades. Here is another very good trick that I have recently started using a lot in my drawings. Just look at the midsection of his hair in the reference picture. It happens to have a lot of reflected lights. It is very difficult to get this kind of look using a pencil and creating highlights using a mono eraser by itself. Here is a tool that can change the game for you. This is a dotting tool. You can find it very easily on any e-commerce website. Just search for dotting tool and you will find n number of options to choose from. It has blunt points at both the ends of various thicknesses. We will use this to create a depression on our paper and once we start to shade over it, it will give us a very different and unique texture. It is very easy and I highly recommend using this in your artworks. I'll take a pencil and roughly start shading on it. Just notice how the white lines pop up automatically. I am going to draw a few lines using this dotting tool in the direction of the hair flow. We don't want to overdo it. For now this much seems to be fine. Now I'll start darkening the areas and create hair like texture. starting to add shades to the area where we have already added some impressions using our dotting tool. Let's see how it turns out. I will move my pencil rapidly in the direction of the hair flow, leaving some gaps in between just so that I don't fill up the impressions with graphite. I think this should work. We can further spend more time on it and add details but I will stop here and move on to adding some finishing touches. With this, we have come to the end of our process and the result looks something like this. Make sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed the process and do subscribe to my channel. 
do follow me on Instagram. I regularly post good content about my drawing process and weekly updates over there too. I have an entire playlist for all the Fence characters. Do check it out. This is Spencer Lurkedi signing off.